welcome back to another episode. So, a bit of pre-context before we start this one. It's been filmed over a couple of weeks and the wagon is now at home. I'll explain all later. Welcome back to another episode of Backyard Builds. This week, there's a bit going on in the shed. This will be in another episode, but Tom's got the blue unit apart, and I'm working on the wagon. So, prices on the motor was really good, but so is in, Rod and Custom. So is Rod and Custom, but in 20 odd minutes of driving, I found, we found, a few little issues with the wagon. A few? Yeah, it was a run in. <laughs> sure. So, one is it's too low, so I've already made new rear hangers for it, so I'll lift it up a little bit. Two, radiator's too low, so it's really hard to bleed. So today's job is I'm going to actually space it out off the core support, rad support a little bit, and lift it up simultaneously. And we're still nowhere with lifters at the minute, but we're working on it. It is now middle of July. It is... We're filming this on the 9th of July, so it's not even the middle of July. <laughs> it's the start of July, and we've got a an event at the end of August. Middle of August. Middle of August. <laughs> One is going. Two is going. So the next few episodes are going to be us getting ready for that. But we probably won't film that. We'll probably just have a weekend away together and have a good time. Yeah, that's a secret. So we'll start with this radiator first. So one of the biggest problems or the reason why we're lifting the radiator is the bottom hose predominantly and the fact that it gets a bit of an airlock in it because the top, an airlock. <laughs> the top elbow is a little bit higher than uh, everything. Everything. So the bottom hose, try to make it out of dash 20. A bit tight. It's a bit tight so I don't end up with a huge kink in it. Didn't actually collapse the hose part. There's a spring in there. There's a spring in there, which you can't see. I'm just checking the water, but yeah. So we're going to replace that with actual hose. So I can buy a dash 20 to one and a half inch uh, rubber hose adapters. So that's what we're going to do and go from the bottom hose like that. We might actually swap the top hose out as well. We'll see how we go. So now that the radiator's out, what we're going to have to do is space off the rad support to come out past this lip so it's roughly about 10 mil so what we're going to do is some 10 mil flat bar alley flat we'll cut two strips of that mount it in here we'll probably notch out around the flat bar up here because chances are that new hole is going to land in that hole there and we might trim this back just a just a frag to get it there but the overflow needs to be just higher than here to eliminate the airlock that we've been having. So I've measured it up, two pieces at 350 should work. We'll start with that, get that mounted, and go from there. Key to a good seal. Oh, I've been through that on, on the other video. Ah. Oh. Not too much goo. Coming out soon. Maybe. Oh, it could be already out. Before we release it. <laughs> so I've done one side now. So for the radiator support, what I did was I needed to notch it out. So I've run a drill in right on the edge there. Just gives it a nice little radius. Makes it easy to cut as well. So I've got a cut between there with the grinder. But this side's already done. So as you can see, a little bit of a notch out. I grab the flat, comes in between the notch out really nice. So now drill and tap this from this side, cut the other side, drill and tap it, radiator into height, then we'll mark back on the back side where the holes are existing in the radiator and we'll drill and tap back the other way. So we've got the flat bar drilled and tapped. Got one side already in, so what I'm doing now is just cutting down some bolts. So if you're from Australia and you know, 
And if, especially if you're from Canberra, no nut and bolt shops open on a Saturday or a Sunday here anymore. So if you don't get it through the week, you got to use what you got. Or go to Bunnings. Which, if you know... is 10% cheaper if you can't find it. <laughs> it's not 10 percent cheaper if you can't find them because they don't have them i went last weekend to get some bolts and they don't stock any 716s unc nah. so anyway i'm gonna cut some bolts down while bob ross is over here painting away painting with bob ross painting with tom ross <laughs> what's your uh, brush method there mate just little crisscross pattern just lay it on just get it on there just get it on there don't worry about the pattern so to cut down some bolts a little tech trip tech tip is to put a nut on there so what happens is when you undo the nut it re threads it essentially or Why fixes the thread and then we'll hit it on the bench grinder just to clean the thread up so i'll cut some down get the other flat bone put the rad back in and mark the other side don't let the fire go out that's a bit big you stand there. I'll stand here. I'll stand here. So we've got the radiator now clamped up on our spaces. So we've now got a really good gap off the rad support panel, but not as good gap off the water pump. Don't worry about that later, yeah? Worry about that later. So the main thing that we're trying to do or achieve is get this to the highest point. See so what, we, this what we're going to do is low. we're going to try and check it. So we're just going to use a straight edge. So grab our straight edge across here. And then what we can do is we can actually sweep it across the top of the hose and we can see that it's going to be lower. So that yeah. thermostat housing is slightly up. It's going to sit down. And as we can see, it's now lower. So that will bleed off a lot better and make it a lot more efficient for the radiator to actually work. Not that it needs to be much more efficient. No, it's pretty efficient. Just the thing doesn't get hot. <laughs> have air in there. Yeah. What happens when air gets stuck in there? Uh, it doesn't circulate properly. No, it gets hot. It gets hot. And... <laughs> it gets stuck. Yeah. But, spacers should sort it out. So now I'll mark the back side of the radiator, or the back side of the adapter plates. With a, with, I'm using the holes under the clamp there. Yeah. So I actually realised while I was editing, I didn't actually show the finish up of the radiator mount. So, as you can see, it's got those 10 mil aluminium pieces in both sides. Space of the radiator after quite nice. We managed to get that fill point higher than the elbow. This will probably be replaced with a rubber hose. I actually found that an LH bottom hose works perfectly. So that's what's in there now. So got to rewire this, come up a bit short. So, because we lifted it up, rewire that and keep going. So we're back again. We've got the radiator lifted up, and now Dan is here. We had some overnight parts from Albury, so we've actually got brand new lifters. So massive shout out to Engine Masters. They helped us, looked after us immensely, got those sorted with comp and internally with themselves. So we will now, Dan's just cutting a little bucket open. Sort of. We're gonna soak the lifters. Um, Dan likes to use ATF. What's your reason behind that, Daniel? ATF fluid works. It's a it's a very very high temperature lubricant, so that when you first fill an engine, as I've said before, on Nix LS, on Nix LS, that uh, on initial startup, first startup of something, it's just nice to have it as lubricated as you can, so you don't wear out bits too fast. So or at all. We'll get that done. We'll get the lifters in, push rods back in, top end reassembled, and see how we go. It's okay, Daniel. It's not. <laughs> not one bit of it. So you got the lifters back in now. Lifters are in. They soaked for about two hours, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. It was a, it was a time lapse thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so yeah, the lifters are in, and push rods and the shafts on a Chrysler motor, on a Mopar motor. This is how they're designed. Um, and now we're just gonna go through and adjust, because this is a hydraulic roller camshaft and valve train. And we're just gonna adjust the preload on the push rods to ensure that when the car's running, it's got oil pressure, 
there's about a, a, a 10 to 15 thou preload on the lifter, and that's what makes for a quiet valve train in a, in a short way. Okay. So we so always try and, there, there's several ways that you can do it, but I always like just to start from the start, take all the spark plugs out, it's nice and easy to turn over. Start at cylinder number one, your opposing cylinder to number one on this car is number six. So across the way here at number six, you look for the point where the rockers are just starting to pivot. And then that's the point when you can adjust number one correctly and you can do both valves at the same time. So now it's just a sequence and we go through and do all of them. So I'm going to lay on the ground and Dan's going to do the hard work. Yeah, right. something like that. You are the rockstar mechanic. Oh, I doubt that. <laughs> I'm not helping. This is your doing. Dan's still helping, but... So one of the other problems that we found is the thermostat with that electric water pump. So the water pump actually pulls too much water and doesn't allow the thermostat to open properly. So what we've done is we've drilled a little hole in the thermostat to allow the pressure to go through somewhat and then the thermostat should open, correct? Put a couple more holes in that. That's what Dan recommended. Jesus. Putting me in the pool again. Putting a second one in there. Ah, oh, she will. What are you doing here? Just trying to... It's like an ADHD toy. Something about that isn't right, because... So we can actually lift it on the tie bar, up and down. So Dan's done all the preload correct, so they're all the same. We soaked them for like two hours. I'm really at a loss with this motor. And I'm about to... No, you're not. <laughs> you're not allowed to. Stop being such a baby. For sale, 119.66. Safari? Not for sale. <laughs> Unless Zach wants to find himself friendless. Sack, alone. Saxon will still be my friend. No, he won't. All right, so we've gone to start it. We couldn't get it to start, whatever we did. The distributor hasn't been pulled. We've gone over timing. We've gone over everything. So we're back on the valve train again, and it looks like, yet again, Comp have pulled through with a quality product. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. So we'll get it out, and we'll keep you posted on what's going on. The jobs just continue. So it's yet another weekend on the wagon. Tom's had a bit of a reshuffle in the shed. G's back here. Forklift's in. Blue Ute is running again. And the bonnet's still up on the wagon. So this is where we got to. The motor didn't start. This lifter on the left is all the way down. I've had a chat to the engine builder, Warren, top bloke. He said blow some compressed air in the oil hole. Up. I can push it straight back in, all the way to the bottom. We did. The plunger come back up. Problem is, is you can push the plunger back down with your finger. So I've got two options here. I can try and pull this apart and from the other set that I've still got, put it back together with a new spring in it. Or I can run one of the well known, the ones that I know work and pump up out of the other set to get me by for the pub run. Chances are I'm gonna go a solid cam, a solid roller here, or even a solid flat tap it because I'm absolutely sick of lifter failure. Now, it's nothing to do with the engine itself. The engine itself, the lifters have failed in different holes. So first time it wouldn't pump up in eight and three, we've alleviated that problem with a new set of lifters. This time it collapsed at the spring in cylinder two on the exhaust. So it's nothing to do with the motor. It's purely the lifters. So that's my options. Gonna do it and put it back together today and see if we can get it to fire. Lift us back in, just uh, doing up the rock again now. So what I've actually done is I've loosened the roller rockers off. So make the screws right out. 
just so that there's no tension because the cam's obviously in place. So we'll start to screw those back in once we get everything set down and then we'll start to adjust valves. So with Mopars, they're on a shaft. So we're gonna start in the center. Boom, 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 boom. Work out, try and keep in each even tension all the way on the shaft as we bring it down to tight. Talk it up and set some adjustment up. So unfortunately, <laughs> we got that other set of lifters in and they've actually failed. So I'm in a bit of a stalemate with the wagon, to be honest. It's more of a money thing at the moment. Um, I've already bought another set of lifters. I just did that today. So yeah, motor's got to come back out. Box has got to come back out, so it's a fair bit of work. Um, we probably won't bore you with an episode on that. So this will probably be the last episode on the wagon until it's actually running properly and we take it to the dyno. So there are a few little bits and pieces that um, still need to be done and are on the list to do, but I have ticked a lot of boxes and I've finished up a few more things that I wanted. Um, yeah, so lifters I bought were actually uh, BAM lifters and we're going to a solid roller as opposed to our hydraulic roller. So, yeah. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our previous videos. If you want to see what it takes to build a V8 VC Safari wagon, go back, have a look at the playlist. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you again on Backyard Builds.